Joining us now by phone is Michael Avenatti, the former lawyer to Stormy Daniels, calling in from the Terminal Island Federal Prison in California. Michael, welcome. MSNBC is so desperate to slam dunk on the Trump trial in New York that they even called Michael Avenatti from prison. The hottest of all of the cases that they've been throwing at Donald Trump appears to be the most bogus of them all. This is the one that you'll hear described as a hush money case. It's it's not hush money. Why Even Fox News and Newsmax and these other conservative outlets use this term. It's a hush money case. It's not hush money. Donald Trump entered into a legal non-disclosure agreement with an individual, as so many other people do. I guarantee you that every single anchor you see reading a teleprompter and says hush money have gotten some sort of payment or paid a payment of some sort over the years by signing a non-disclosure agreement. Oftentimes it's embedded into your contract. When you work for a media company, there's a paragraph there that talks about non-disclosure. And in exchange for that non-disclosure, you get paid extra money or a higher salary. It's a lie. That said, this is the case that seems to be getting all the traction right now. MSNBC, they're so desperate to give wall-to-wall coverage and to dunk on Trump that they even picked up the phone and called prison. They called prison to get Michael Avenatti on the phone. He, of course, was, as Tucker Carlson called him, the creepy porn lawyer who took up the case of Stormy Daniels and now... Well, he's in jail because he defrauded and took advantage of and stole from Stormy Daniels. But that doesn't bother MSNBC. Hey, he can trash Trump, so let's get him on the air. And then after he has what he has to say, we'll turn to Republican Ronna Romney McDaniel to give her analysis. Oh, no, 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 that's right. We couldn't possibly have Ronna McDaniel on, the former chairwoman of the RNC. She's odious. She makes us all feel icky. She's terrible. It defies our journalistic ethics and standards to have Ronna McDaniel on. So let's just talk to the incarcerated, convicted, creepy porn lawyer, shall we? Oh, MSNBC, you make us all proud as a peacock. Uh, It's good to have you. We have a lot of news to get to. uh, But first, how are you holding up? Well, as uh, as Elton John once wrote, I'm still standing, Ari. I'm uh, I'm doing fine, and uh, but maybe maybe when you're in a men's prison, you shouldn't refer to uh, Elton John. <laughs> Just say it. If I were you, I would not be singing Elton John songs at mealtime there in the men's prison, Michael. And I'm glad you're still standing, but it's probably because you know after yesterday's shower experience, it's uh, not very comfortable to sit. Anyway, back to Avenatti. You know, to those. Uh, who were hoping that perhaps this, the last few years would, uh, you know, ultimately destroy me. I've got some bad news for them, and that is that it hasn't. Uh, I'm going to come out of this uh, better and stronger than ever, and, uh, you know, every day I strive to make sure that this does not define me. No, no, this is definitely going to define you. You've been defined. Of course, for MSNBC, your only definition that matters is that you hate Donald Trump. So, of course, we're going to welcome you with open arms and but, but for the rest of us, for most of us, for the people that actually have morals and ethics, no, no, you've been defined. Congratulations. That said, listen, I, we pray for Michael Avenatti and his soul. Uh, I hope that actually he does have some sort of real reformation, some sort of real enlightenment while he's in prison and actually changes his ways. And uh, while he's at it, maybe he can turn his life over to the Lord or something like that. But short of that, mm, yeah, he's still a creepy porn lawyer. Uh, I believe this will be ultimately, you know, a chapter in a in a very long book as opposed to the book. Understood. Uh, And you join us at a very newsworthy time. Uh, Some of your lawyering uh, led to the exposure, the evidence in this case. Uh, Sorry, I swear I'm going to let them finish, but your lawyering led to the exposure of this. You know, the lawyering that you then raised millions of dollars on and then defrauded your client and never gave gave to her the money that you went on television raising money for so that you could get Trump. And then, of course, nothing came of it. Your civil trial dried up and nothing came of it because really your lawyering amounted to you enriching yourself and defrauding your own client, who, by the way, violated her nondisclosure act. So it's kind of hard for you as a lawyer to make money on your client whose sole act in this entire escapade was to violate the contract she entered into years ago. And oh, by the way, even the U.S. attorney looked at the so-called evidence that you gathered through your lawyering, dismissed this and said there's no charges. It only was when Alvin Bragg, the Soros-funded district attorney in Manhattan, who was desperate to get Donald Trump 
and have some kind of headline that didn't involve stabbing shootings and public defecation on the sidewalks of Manhattan? Did he twist and bastardize the law, turn what was a misdemeanor now into a felony and try to try federal election fraud cases, which is supposed to be the federal uh, Justice Department's jurisdiction, into a criminal case in the island of Manhattan? But it was all your lawyering, Michael Avenatti. We'd be nowhere without you. This is so pathetic. And it gets worse because this is where MSNBC's hopes and dreams are shattered because they were so ready for Michael Avenatti to tell them how Trump was going to the big house. Trump's going to be his cellmate there because of all of the horrible crimes that he committed. And, well, it didn't go that way for MSNBC. Here it is. Uh, the New York trial now will be Donald Trump's first and possibly only trial this year. Um, how do you assess the strength of the prosecution's case? Well, I think what I'm about to say is going to surprise a lot of people, and that is that, um, you know, I think this is the wrong case at the wrong time, Ari. Um, I, I think that the case is in many ways stale at this juncture. You're talking about conduct that occurred some eight years ago. Uh, I think the uh, fact that it's occurring in state court in New York uh, is a mistake. Uh, and I think that when you are going to uh, potentially deprive tens of millions of Americans uh, of their choice for the presidency of the United States, whether we agree with those folks or not, or regardless of what we may think of Donald Trump, I think it's a mistake to do it based on a case of this nature. Hmm. Um, I, I was hoping, frankly, that uh, there would have been less hand-wringing, uh, less bedwetting, and that the January 6th case would have been filed in a more timely manner. There's no excuse or reason as to why that case could not have been brought in 2021, and it should have been brought in 2021. And had it been brought in 2021, we would not find ourselves in the situation that we're in right now. Now, I know a lot of people have been critical of the United States Supreme Court and uh, as well as the second, uh, not the second, but the D.C. Circuit. Yep. You know, I, I think those complaints are frankly misplaced. And Michael, have you been in touch with D.A. Bragg's office and what specifically in, in evidence or logic uh, do you think is wrong with this case? Well, I'm going to decline to answer as to whether I've been in touch with you know, either the defense or um, the DA's office. But, but let me say this in response to the second part of your question. You know, I, I think the, the case has a lot of problems. Now, that, that does not, I don't mean to suggest that that means that Trump will not be convicted, because I think he will be convicted, hmm. because, number, because number one, he's a criminal defendant, and in our society, I don't believe that criminal defendants generally get a fair shake. In fact, I think that the percentage of convictions demonstrates that, that the deck is stacked decidingly against all criminal defendants, um, number one. Number two, I don't think that he can get a fair trial in New York. And to the people who claim that, in fact, he can get a fair trial in New York with a New York jury, I would ask them if they were to sleep, go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow and find out that the case had been moved to Mississippi or Alabama, would they still think that the trial was going to be fair? And I think if they were being honest, they would answer no. So I don't think he can get a fair trial in, in New York. So there you go. Michael Avenatti not really giving MSNBC what they were looking for. This is a bad case. It's eight years old. The evidence doesn't support it. Now, don't get me wrong. He's probably still going to get convicted, but only because the entire thing is rigged. And if it weren't in New York, he probably would be acquitted. And oh, by the way, that whole Jack Smith case, the prosecution over January 6th, they should have done it in 2021, you know, right after the events occurred, because literally nothing changed between 2021 and where we are right now, where it still hasn't gone to trial. But, you know, they took too long for it. Now it's going to get hung up with the Supreme Court and other findings. If they had tried him in 21, then it would have timed out better. But, of course, the only reason they waited until now is because this has nothing to do with the law or with anyone breaking the law or any criminal purposes. It's all to do with politics. And, well, this year is the presidential election because this case really doesn't have anything to do with with anything having to do with justice. It has to do with winning an election. OK, those last parts I added on from Michael Avenatti, but we read between the lines.
It's it's glorious that MSNBC won't have a Republican like the chairwoman of the co committee on the Republican National Committee or most congressmen or senators aren't allowed on either. But the one person that they want to bring on to talk about the Donald Trump case is literally a convicted felon. Live from jail, it's Michael Avenatti. Meanwhile, it's true, this is probably the only case that we'll see the inside of a courtroom that a jury will hear with regard to Donald Trump prior to the election, and it's quite possible and probable that he will be convicted. That said, everything Michael Avenatti just told you, shockingly, is true, and that's why Eric Trump, the son of the president, appeared on Fox & Friends this morning and said, you know, we're going to win in the long run on all this stuff. If it, if it comes to Donald Trump, he no longer has a freedom of speech, according to these courts. And it's um, he'll take this all the way to the Supreme Court. He'll take it as far as he needs. And he's got an amazing voice. And he will come in here, and he's going to win the cases. And, um, and Brian, he's going to win this presidency. Six, six months you believe you're going to Six months out, you believe you're going to win? I know we're going to win. I know we're going to win because I, I, I know where this country is. I, I, I can feel the sentiment of the country. Um, and people are not buying what's happening right now. Um, the mainstream media, they'll keep on peddling their nonsense. But... Americans are upset. Right. This country is going down the tube. Um, and they miss right. the guy who did a great job for this nation, which was Donald Trump. And he's going to be back in office. I right. guarantee it. And I'd just be very curious to see if he wins again, uh, if you'll be joining him this time. Uh, and we'll see if you're the, the Trump that goes or the Trump that stays. Yeah. Great to see, you, Eric. Thanks always so much, fantastic. Brian. Appreciate you. It's always great. The Trump that goes or the Trump that stays. I think that's a reference to who ends up working in the White House. It was Ivanka last time around. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think she said that she doesn't want to work in the White House again after her last experience, you know, because she was beloved by Manhattan and fashion circles and design circles. And and even she appeared on the covers of magazines right up until the point her father ran for president. And then, of course, she was well, she was removed from public society. That's what the left does.